Amen. I read from verse 6. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. What did the Bible say? The righteous which is of faith. In the Old Testament, their righteousness was on the law. Let's look at verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not thou in the heart. Who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above? Or ascend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead? For what saith he, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart? That is, the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As is this written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who had believed our report. So then, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The faith in Christ is a major theme of the gospel. This verse 9 and 10 captures it all. It says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mind confession is made unto salvation. This faith that produces salvation is what is popularly called saving faith. And it is this saving faith that gives eternal life. John 3, 15 says, That whosoever believeth in him, in Christ, should not perish, but have eternal life. But anyone that does not believe in Christ is condemned and will face everlasting punishment on the last day. So, those that say, they have another religion. Better pack that up and put their trust in Christ because there is no other name. As chapter 4 12 says, For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Only Jesus can save. So the Bible says, he that believeth not is condemned already because he did not believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God. But he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abided on him. I'm going to look at this teaching from three part one points to believe in Christ two possibilities of believing in Christ lastly process of believing in Christ what are we to believe about Christ the sinner what must the sinner believe about Christ one the sinner must be must believe the gospel of Christ the good news of Christ. Look at Mark chapter 1 verse 15. 
he must believe the story that Jesus came to die for sinners and that he died, he rose again for their justification. He must believe that story. In Mark 1 15, and saying, The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So we must believe the gospel of Christ. The sinner must believe the gospel of Christ. In John 2 22, John 2 verse 22, he must not believe any other story but the glad time must be believe John 2 22 when he was risen from the dead his disciple remember that he had said this unto them and they believe the scripture and the word which Jesus has said he must believe the scripture of Christ and believe the words that Christ spoke of himself that he is the way, the truth, and the life. We must do, we must believe that Jesus is God's only begotten Son. Some people say God is the Son. Those people will not see eternal life. We must believe that Christ is God's only begotten Son. John 3, 18. He that believe on him is not condemned. He that believeth not condemned already. Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The scripture broken. Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. That is what God says. Uh, how did the God become, Christ become a, a, a Son of God? He, that is not your business. Bible says, Jesus says, He is the only begotten Son of God. Take that to the bank. Leave how did it happen? How, how, did the world, how was the world created? Can you, can you explain by science how the world came into existence? So when God says something about Himself, believe that. That he is the only begotten Son of God. John 6 40. John 6 40. The sinner must believe that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. John 6 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone will see the Son and believe it on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up. At the last day, when we see him in his word, we must believe him as the son of God. We must believe him. In uh, John eleven twenty seven. John eleven twenty seven. Believe him. John eleven twenty seven. She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. That is what guarantees salvation. Acts chapter 8, verse 37. When the eunuch told, the Ethiopian eunuch, when he told Philip, what prevent me from being baptized? Philip said, nothing prevent you if you believe. Look at Acts 8, Verse 37. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That is what guarantees salvation. If you don't believe, you only believe him as a prophet, you will not be saved. You must believe him as the Son of God. Not only that, you must believe him as the only Savior. Look at Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Matthew chapter 1, the angel announced. I, 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 can you imagine? Angels that are in heaven with God. One so-called preacher. 
is preaching in Nigeria and he said the angel's testimony about Christ is false and that angels don't know much that angels learn from us can you imagine and people are listening to a man like that if it's in the Old Testament he will be stoned to death but the time is coming when he, the Lord himself will consume him what was he talking about the angel said Jesus whom you have seen go to heaven will come in the same manner he said Jesus did not go to heaven and people are listening to a man like that and he calls himself a preacher that all others are in error so the angel said told Joseph in Matthew 1 21 and she shall bring forth his son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from what? from their sins you must believe him as your only savior he said in John chapter 14 verse 6 he said I have let's look at it together John chapter 14 in verse 6 Jesus said unto him I am the way the truth and the life no man comment unto the father but what by me in short in uh, Osea 13 verse 4 Osea 13 as far back as the Old Testament they spoke about Christ as the only Savior and there is no other Savior every other man that claim to be a founder of a demonic religion cannot see Osea 13 verse 4 yet I go from of it I shall know God but for there is no Savior beside there is no Savior beside Jesus and then Peter capital when he was addressing the scientist, the council, and that council usually made up of 71 members, he was addressing them, being presided over by the chief priests. He told them, he cleared them in uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 12, there is neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven give him an old man whereby we must be saved only Jesus saves then Jesus must be believed must be believed as the Christ the Messiah the anointed one look at John 6 69 John 6, 69. We must believe him as God's only begotten son. We must believe him as the only savior. We must believe him as the Messiah, as the Christ. The word Christ and Messiah means the same thing. Messiah is Hebrew. Christ is Greek. The earth means the anointed one. We must believe him as the only anointed one that was anointed to save mankind. In John 6, 69. John 6, 69. And we believe and assure that thou art that Christ, the son of the living God. We must believe him as Christ. And that was what we also saw in that John eleven twenty seven, when Martha was talking to Jesus, he said, "She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which will come into the world." Then we must believe him as Lord. We must believe him as Lord. Look at that uh, uh, 27. He says, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ. We must believe him as Lord. He's not an ordinary human being. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord and our Savior. Then we must believe that Christ died. He was buried 
and he resurrected from the dead. John, Roma, that Roman chapter 10, verse 9. Roma chapter 10, in verse 9. The word of God says that if thou shalt confess with thy man the Lord Jesus is Lord. And shall believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Then, when we believe in him, before then, let's look at, let me corroborate that fact. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 to 4. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 to verse 4. Paul the Apostle, writing under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, in verse 30, For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also receive, how that Christ died for our sins, according to what? To the scripture. He died. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to all, to the scripture. He died. He was buried and he resurrected. You must believe that fact for you to be saved. So when we believe in Christ, what does that faith in Christ do for us? What does it produce for us? That brings us to the second part. Possibilities of believing in Christ. Number one, it produces forgiveness of sin. Faith in Christ gives forgiveness of sin. All our sin and short of the glory of God. But faith in Christ gives pardon. Acts chapter 10, verse 48. Acts 10, 48. 40, rather. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sin, pardon for sin, forgiveness of sin. Then faith in Christ justifies us, it counsels our offense. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus. It justifies us and also gives us peace. It restores peace in our heart. Not only that, it grants salvation. That our text says that if thou shalt confess with the man the Lord Jesus shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved that is what gives salvation and also it is faith in Christ that restores our sonship and give us the power of sonship. John 1 12 said, But as many that receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You see, it, it is conditioned on believing in his name. So those that do not believe, the Jews that did not believe, they were not called sons of God. And so Jesus said they are of their father, the devil. Because they did not believe. In John chapter 8, 44, he said, you are not of me, you are of your father, the devil. So those that do not believe are not children of God. Not every human being on earth can be called a child of God. Those that do not, the unbelievers, they are not children of God. In short, look at Romans chapter, Roman, uh, Second Corinthians, sorry, chapter 6, I read verse 17 and 18. 
Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17. Wherefore come out from among them, be ye separate, say the Lord, and touch not your clean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, say the Lord. As you come out of sin and sinful ways, that is when you are referred to as a son, a daughter of God. Also, faith in Christ illuminates the soul, gives light to the soul. You see, the sinner is in darkness. is full of darkness. But the moment you receive Christ, you believe Christ, the light of God shines into your heart. John chapter 8 verse 12. John 8 verse 12 Then speaks Jesus again unto them Saying I am the light of the world He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness But shall have the light of life John 12 46 John 12 verse 46 I am come a light unto the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. First Timothy chapter Second Timothy chapter one in verse ten. Second Timothy chapter one verse ten. There also Paul the apostle writing under the hand of God clearly states, but Islam made manifest. By the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had abolished death and had brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Then also, faith in Christ produces righteousness and sanctification. Romans 1 17 says, Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Then in uh, Romans chapter 4 verse 3. The Bible says, Abraham believed God. And it was counted to him for what? For righteousness. Then in Acts chapter 15 verse 9. Acts 15 verse 9. While uh, Peter was reporting how the, the household of Cornelius got baptized in the Holy Ghost. He did say that faith purified their heart. Acts chapter nine, 15 verse 9. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their heart by what? By faith. It purifies, it sanctifies. It gives satisfaction and rest. Faith in Christ gives satisfaction and rest. In John chapter 6 verse 35 John 6 35 gives satisfaction. John 6 35 Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that come to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never Past. Then he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and have a lady, and I will do what? Give you rest. The sinner is troubled, it's restless. But the moment the sinner believes in Christ, light shines in, peace comes in, and there is rest. Also, faith produces. And empowers and baptizes with the Holy Ghost. Jesus said in John 7, 38 to 39. He that believeth on me, out of belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost at that time was not given. Then, faith in Christ... 
produces signs and wonders. In Mark 16, 17, it said, These signs shall follow them that what? That believe. In my name, they will cast out devil. They will lay their hand on the sick. The sick shall recover. In short, in uh, John chapter 14, verse 12 to 2, it said, He that believeth in me, the works that I do shall he do, and greater works than this shall he do, because what well, I go to the Father. Faith in Christ brings healing and deliverance. And so when Peter was reporting about how that man at the beautiful gate got healed, he said, It is faith. In the name of Jesus that has given him this sound health. And you remember the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus Christ said, Daughter, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee what? Who? The same thing is said about Bartimaeus. Also, faith in Christ gives victory and dominion. First John chapter 5 verse 4. Ye have got little children and overcome them because greater, no, uh, verse, chapter 4, verse 4, see, because greater is he that is in you that is in the world. Then, uh, chapter 5, verse 4 now says, He that, let's look at it in uh, First John chapter 5, verse 4. First John chapter 5. In verse 4, it talks about the victory of faith. Victory through faith. For whatsoever is born of God overcoming the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Faith, ultimately, and above all, grant us eternal life in heaven. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but what? Have everlasting life. How can the sinner believe in Christ? What is the process? That brings us to the last part. And under this we'll look at two parts. The Savior's role in salvation and sinners' responsibilities in salvation. The Savior's role involves one, commissioning and empowering his servants to declare the gospel. He said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And then Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. So faith coming by hearing and hearing by the world. That is why so winners have a duty. When the Spirit of God said, Preach, you must preach. Because by that the Roman said, How can they believe without hearing? And how can they hear without what? A preacher. Also, God, Jesus Christ, will at times do some wonders and signs to bring conviction. He said in John 4, verse 40, he said, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The purpose of signs and wonders is to confirm the gospel. And when John wrote, he concluded by saying that the my writing is to make you to believe in John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31. John 20, verse 30 and 31. The, the Bible says, it says, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life 
through his name. Also, another thing the Lord does in the salvation equation process is he releases grace. Because he said, no man can come to me except the Father draws him. You see, the Bible says in Titus chapter 2 verse 11, the grace of God that bringeth salvation as what appeared to all men. And Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, by grace are ye saved through faith and not of us. So, it is the grace that quickens us. Somebody may have been very, very opposed to Christ. But when the grace of God is revealed unto the person, the person will now begin to seek God in repentance. There must be an enablement. But you said, well, then, uh, why, why, then the other people that are not saved. It doesn't mean the grace has not been revealed. No. The Bible says the grace of God that brings us salvation has appeared to all, all men. The grace of God does not compel us to receive Christ. It only enables. But man is a free moral agent who can decide not to heed the voice of the Spirit. What are the sinners' responsibility? Is to acknowledge his sins. And to be sorry for his sins, to confess and forsake his sins, then have expressed faith in Christ's atoning sacrifice on the cross, accept Christ as personal Savior, and confess him as Lord. So, faith is important for salvation and for eternal life. Let's go to the Lord in prayers. If your faith is shaking, you need to go back and say, Lord, I believe. Help thou my 